out there. So to prophesy that, uh, I'm not that. Well, stupid. we know what the nominations are. We're talking about the win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, Pete, what, what, what could the shocker would be among I the wins? I just said a Toy Story. You know what? You know what the shocker could be too is if we see Haley Steinfeld. There's this whole Haley Steinfeld thing happening now. This train taking off. If she lands in the right category. There might be enough steam to push her to a win, maybe? I mean, I would love that because she is the center of the film. She deserves to be considered in the lead category. I mean, the whole idea that she should be in supporting is just <laughs> politics and placement, and it's like Jennifer Connelly and A Beautiful Mind all over again. Um, but she actually deserves to be in the best But she category. has landed in more than one category. I mean, uh, Dave Carter on VW put her, he predicted that she's going to win uh, both we yeah. and supporting. That's how good <laughs> she is. <laughs> <laughs> We've all underestimated her. Of course, you can't do that anymore. Well, yeah, the, the, the software will not permit it. At least the, the SAG software, I was just told, uh, is not going, it, it will, it, there will be no hanging chads no. In, in the SAG election. Um, but uh, it's it's uh, it's a very interesting question. Of, of I've, I've heard plausible <coughs> arguments that she, she begins uh, as the, the hero, and then uh, cedes leadership to uh, Jeff Bridges, and he is the one whose character has an arc, and she stays rock root the same as as, as uh, she does throughout. I don't know. The Coen brothers told me uh, she's the one driving the train, and so maybe we should believe the creators. On the other hand, what do they know? Well, let's look at uh, you know the cases, <laughs> the, the two recent cases of actresses that were pushed into supporting uh, nominations before they got to the Oscars and then got lead nominations instead. Keisha Castle Hughes in Whale Rider <coughs> and Kate Winslet in The Reader. Both of them, however, are not so-called supporting like uh, an actor like Jeff Bridges or something. They are the stars of their movies. And so it made perfect sense that the Academy would say, whoa, why are you saying, who are they supporting? Here you can make the argument you just made that she possibly is supporting Jeff Bridges. Well, how about, how about uh, uh, Manville in, in, in another year? What, what, uh, mm -hmm. Leslie Manville. Yes, Leslie Manville is uh, another bubble person. Can I have it? Yes, I will yes. agree with you on bubble. Okay. Yes. It's <laughs> a so very big bubble. All right. <laughs> <laughs> A bubble about to burst. We hope we hope. Right. Uh, no, but is she the lead? I mean, but is she the lead? Of the movie. She is, and she isn't. I mean, she's conspicuous. But then there's a there's a male drunk just like her, and and uh, the only fatter. And there's there's a, <laughs> there's a, uh, a the, you could say that the lead is the couple, the smug couple, and then they're ambiguous. <laughs> the, the man makes complicated movies, and, and that's a big mistake. Well, she was the last image you see on the film, and that's sort of a way I look at who the star of. And I know Mike Lee, having talked to him, definitely says that without question she's the lead of this movie. Okay. Yeah. I agree with you on that. Yeah. More so than Ruth Sheen is. Right. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah. I don't think Ruth Sheen, I think, you know, just because it's their house that everybody comes mm -hmm. to, uh, still, Leslie Manville's the one that you're, you're following through this whole movie. And the character forces herself into being the lead, whether or not everybody else wants her to be. So. Yeah, so and of course the way he makes movies, they sort of create it as they go along. So it, maybe she evolved into that during the making of it, I'm not sure. At this point in the Derby, we tend to believe, what? at this point in the Derby, it looks as if Social Network will win Best Picture, David Fincher, director, uh, Natalie Portman, actress, Colin Firth, best actor, Melissa Leo, supporting actress, Christian Bale, supporting actor, are we all agreed that this race is already over for the most part, or are we, where? Or, and if that's not the case, what surprise could upend all of this? There could be a split between picture and director. I would yeah. say that perhaps King's Speech wins Best Picture, yeah. but Fincher wins director. Okay. So. Well, and, and Melissa Leo's star waned a little bit mm -hmm. uh, just lately uh, when, when she she missed uh, one of the precursors. But uh, it does seem this it, it does seem annoyingly. Predictable, and maybe it's our fault for putting all that that speculation out there. Maybe it would be better if we just shut up the whole time. Well, that would be good. But what would we do, Tim? It is all our fault. Yes. My Amazon money is gone. I think. Where could things suddenly take a U-turn, or where can the surprise be? Well, I think the surprise probably in the supporting category. I mean, if the King's Speech really takes off, I could see Jeffrey Rush up ending Christian Bale. You know, if 
if you suddenly saw a big wave for King's speech. Uh, Melissa Leo, I th you know, only if Haley Steinfeld winds up in supporting, you know, I mean, but that supporting actress race is kind of fluid anyway. Uh, right. Melissa Leo wasn't right. even nominated for a BAFTA award. It was Amy Adams. That's true. And movie. Barbara Hershey was. And if we see Barbara Hershey in there, we could see a sudden surge. Barbara Hershey was nominated, not but not Mila Kunis. Right, right. Leslie right. Manville was put into supporting there. Haley Steinfeld right, right. was put into lead. I mean, BAFTA has 500 you know, members that are the same as the Academy. Right, so. right, right. And when the upsets happen, they tend to be in supporting, right, Pete? Yeah, I, usually right. you're going to see them there. The Jim Broadbent, uh, uh, Pollock, Marsha Gay Harden. Yeah, the, lead, the leads are a little more cut and dry. I mean, Colin Firth, there is no way you know, he can lose unless something comes out about him being a serial killer somewhere or something. <laughs> something <laughs> no, not, not that his character has been a Nazi sympathizer, but that he is a practicing Nazi. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that might, I'm not saying it's true. Can I say the name Jackie Weaver real fast? Yes. yes. Love, her. love her. I love her. I think she's great. How do you, how do you vote against Grandma Smurf? She'll, she'll hunt you down and make you vote well, for right, right. So, I mean, she's amazing. I mean, we haven't talked about Helena Bottom Carter at all. If we're no, talking about your, if, yeah. if we're talking about your, your King's Speech sweep, if we're yeah. talking about that. And then I also love Olivia Williams in Ghost Ride, uh, a movie that has gotten like no attention. But the best movie of the year. Can we talk about why it's not on everyone's list of it's leaders too, it's there? It's too European and, and uh, in Chile. And I think it reflects uh, Polanski's <laughs> isolation. A movie about isolation. He, he did so many movies about isolation up to this point, but now he knows it from the inside. <laughs> it, it's edited from house arrest. You know, it's, it may be the only Oscar contender ever uh, written uh, or edited uh, uh, under those conditions. And I think that it perfectly uh, captures his ghostly. He's, he's a ghost. It's a movie made by a ghost about a ghost. <laughs> but it feels like a Hitchcock film. Yeah, it it's totally so ghost why? like Hitchcock. And it's beautifully yeah. made. And it came out in February. And the Academy does not remember movies. It's in their bylaws. <laughs> <laughs> it comes out in February. We don't remember it, um, you know, at least for the last 15 years. That's, that's a problem that early. The same thing happened to Shutter Island with Martin Scorsese, who's never made a movie with Leonardo DiCaprio that was not a Best Picture nominee. And that's when they had five nominees. Now you're looking at Shutter Island with 10 nominees and not getting in. It's because of those early dates. Ghost Rider is doing really well in Europe. Yes, you just know, one. It's Cesar nominee now and won, won the European Film Awards. Um, it, it, everybody, you know, Summit is not doing what they did for Hurt Locker, unfortunately, and they released it here. And they're just not campaigning it in any big way. I mean, I literally, I got calls, you probably did too, like uh, a week before the nominations closed, what can you do for the ghostwriter? You know, I go like, it's a little late, pal. Yeah. You know, <laughs> talking about this. One thing that's interesting is that uh, um, Olivia said that uh, she uh, is going to have to give her award to Roman if she wins because he made her, he acted out every scene so specifically, uh, intonation, just every single thing about the scene before she did it that. She said she'll just have to hand him the doll if she wins it because it's really his performance channeled through her. So <laughs> that's, a, that's sort of Hitchcockian in its own way.